And the instrument allows you to talk about, uh, give some answers to what you think the vision and the leadership is about, and if they're doing their job properly. And then the data and the technology is part of this. How do you use data? And now this is a very complicated system. There are many ways of looking at it. So analyzing data. Equity. Equity is uh, what we have been seeing over the last 10 years. We have been very good at getting everybody part of this. And Tipu Malela here is also showing the equity component. And so it, it, it's, we are, I think, much better at doing this than the Americans have been doing. <laughs> And then, of course, teaching and learning is part of this. It's so uh, we we need to understand what teaching and learning is all about, and how you are doing it, and how the institution has has, has thinking about thought about it. So, what happened in Cipro Malela One? We used the iCat, but we used the American system, and. It has all American words in it, and it's not really appropriate for the South African concept. So we then asked if we could take the American um, survey and transform it into a South African instrument. So there were at least three iterations, and thank you to all the coaches who worked firstly, and then to the partners who gave the feedback, and the part, and again the coaches did another round before we got to the end of that. So after all this work that we've done, we now have a uh, in from Seal to a process of ICAT. So now I don't expect you to read all of this. I just wanted to show you the way in which the system is built. So in the first part, you will see that there is a way in which you create your instrument for your institution. So if you want to do the ICAT, you have to send me the email address of the person who is going to manage this process. Only one person can manage it. It doesn't have to be the lead. And from then, you can create a new pathway. So that's the top line. Um, you need to log in, and you will get a number at the end of the process. So right at the top of the application, you will get a number that you will use for all people to participate when they come in. If you want to change something, because of course things take time, and one of, we didn't do this in the beginning, but uh, sometimes you want to extend the period of people participating so you can go into it, and that's the bottom line. So the application has two places to look at. The first is to create one, and you need to have appointed somebody who is going to do that and send to Sandy the person's email address, because only one person can create the system for you. And then you can update, that person can then update the, uh, the dates and uh, things, and the, the, the number does not change for that. Once you have done that, you as ask your staff to participate. And it's again a login, a one-time pin, and then they get the instrument. Students are not part of this. It's only the institutional uh, members, staff members, right from the, you can say, right from the uh, newly uh, appointed to the top of the chain. And the more people you uh, have, the better the answer will be. And once it's finished, you can, anybody can get the result. And the result is a PDF with all the information in it. It doesn't have to be the person that 
created it. You as a staff member have access to that component. And the very last one is you can actually go and look at the instrument itself. And it's very easy to find. You just use Sigmarella's um, web address and type instead of having an index, just type iCAT and it will take you to the system. So this is an introduction to it and now we're going to think about how this works and how people have used it and how it is going to be uh, yes, Jane. Just right in the beginning. <laughs> Because um, the, the students' plan at Northeast University should reflect 
the way that you integrate all the different pockets of expertise that has gone into the divorce things is it into one comprehensive plan that we drive. So um, we, 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 we plan thoroughly, I have to once again I have to to commend uh, uh, Dr. Bude's input and also my colleagues are
So at the day, the first important person is our coach. So the coach is really important in that process because they know about the iPad, they know about the conceptual framework, they know about implementation. So they'll guide you right through the process. So Admin had a seat at the table, and then it was our marketing team. It was important for them to be at this planning table. ICS was important for ICS to be at the table. Like Alan says, they give it to you and then your institution needs to run it. So ICS needs to know everything about this process because once we start running it and then there's issues, uh, staff members know who to call upon and ICS knows what to do. So ICS was important. And then we had at the, at, uh, institutional planning unit, which was the BI unit, and they worked with us in order to get information out to the staff members. So once the planning uh, team sat and worked on dates and how we're going to go about very strategically, what information will go out first, second, third, fourth, and finally to the um, iPad um, opening of the survey from May 17. The process we went through and followed was basically a three, three important points. The first one was buying. You need to have buying. And in order to get that buying, you need trust. The first trust is trust from your leadership in the institution. So you have to go and have those conversations with them. And then trust in the instrument that you were using. And then trust in your uh, university community. So you have to build that trust. And the first way we did that was our uh, marketing team was very good, had conversations with uh, the DVC, a video was out for the DVC, we had the VC actually sitting and doing the iPad and asking questions, which button do I press, where do I go, what do I do next, because it's a long process and the iPad takes about 45 minutes. So you have to prepare your stuff to tell them if you're going to do this, it's going to be taking so long. So the buy-in was the first one. The second one was building value, the value of doing this. So when you send out your communication and you're talking about the iPad, what is the value for the institution? What is the value for you as an individual staff member? And what is the value to student success? So you have to build that value in in your communication as you go on. And then lastly, it's about uh, building empowerment. So we're going to have this iPad. What, what game is it for you? And then it's not only providing feedback to the institution. It's about your voice, your voice being heard. And then it's also about agency, which uh, Admin is going to talk about going into the ca Capacity Cafe workshop and then engaging with the data and having that voice at uh, that level. So those three levels was very really important for us, but what really sealed the deal for us was an individual uh, email. So we had normal kind of communication on uh, UWC communication. We had videos on how to, as Alan was explaining, step one, what you have to do, get your uh, code, whatever. We had one, two, three, we had those steps on infographics. We had a video of that as well. But we also had a personalized email sent to all staff members saying, Dear Prof. Pepper, um, hope you're well. You would have seen this information on UWC communication, but we would like you to engage with this and then once again explain why you should do this and uh, the importance and look forward to the uh, follow-up mails. So those individual emails with the BI uh, uh, department helped us to put together was really good. And that's when uh, just before May 17, the whole week we did a countdown, you know, created that hype, that excitement, till so finally we started and we ran it for four weeks and then closed uh, with uh, June. So yeah, I hope that helps. So I'm going to talk about the run-up to the uh, survey. But just to recap for a moment, when you, when you do the survey, you basically answer 
questions that are organized under seven headings. Okay, and those headings there is people have mentioned. Um, okay, yeah, and you had it up on the, on that circle. So there are the questions attached to those categories, like equity, leadership, teaching and learning, and so on. Um, after you close the, the ICAP process, the institution receives um, a PDF with the results, as Alan has said, and that is really the text that you use in the follow-up, which we call the Capacity Cafe. So that is the opportunity, as Sue has said, for the participants to come back and actually look at the results of the survey and to discuss those um, and to really unpack what the survey has said about the institution. Now, I've tried to conceptualize in my mind a kind of metaphor for what this instrument is, and I'll explain to you later why it is quite important. Um, it's not just a survey, it's a series of impressions of individual staff members about their own institution. And I call it impressions because we all have views about leadership and teaching and learning and so on. We, you, were, you were guided by those questions, but it's still individual impressions. And the, uh, the IDAP results is a sort of compilation of, in this case, 500 staff members views of the institution. So it's a very complex picture that is aggregated up, but it captures a lot of variety of viewpoints um, about, about the institution. It's almost like a mirror held up by the institution to itself. So very rich material and really important to unpack that material in order to close the loop of this process. I can also say that it's a, it's a we did it early on um, in the, after UWC became a partner and it was such a good tool also to build our collaborative abilities and to, and to illustrate in very clear, in a very clear way that you have to work across the silos because you have to pull on so many different uh, divisions in the institution in order to have a successful ICAP process. And then, as I said, the Capacity Cafe is an opportunity then, the last part of this process, to discuss the results of the survey. So, at the time, um, we had the Capacity Cafe on the 1st of September. So that was quite a few months after the close of the, the survey. Probably a bit too long, but as you may remember, we were all still sitting at home and trying to do things differently. All the training that the coaches um, received on the ICAT and the Capacity Cafe in the first place was assuming that the Capacity Cafe can, can take place face to face. And that is definitely the idea. But we couldn't do that. We had to go into a virtual mode to do this. Um, and again, it, it, we had to plan. We, so it was a long time between closing the survey and having the capacity cafe, but we needed that time. Um, because we had to go through various processes. I mean, it took us a very long time to try and just work out who should be at the cafe. Um, we had 500 respondents, if everyone said yes, um, we, it would have been unmanageable. So we were going to and fro, and, and I must say we were supported very actively from the ATD side from, uh, by our college coach, Jan Lidden, and materials were created for the, the, the move um, to the virtual uh, mode. So, I mean, in the end, so you must help me there, yeah, we had 41 participants. And as far as I can remember, there were all people who self-selected to be there. But we also used a little bit of social engineering.
have to make sure that certain people would definitely be there. And we wanted to make sure that we have a very good mix um, of people from leadership and then right through to junior staff members. And a good mix of academics and um, staff who are in support services. Um, and administrative staff and everybody. So um, we had 41 participants um, after we sent out our open email inviting people to participate. Um, so the survey results are really a guide to inform the institution about how now to go forward. Now you must remember that I mean, we've just been through that process of writing um, applications uh, to certain levels. So you, you had your plans and how you were going to promote student success. But this is the, the first kind of almost test. Like what we put down in that plan, um, does that fit with what the results of the ICAT is showing us? Or are there other matters that we didn't think about? Um, are there gaps? Are there real opportunities that we never thought about when we wrote the application? So it's a wonderful opportunity for the institutions to talk back to your original plan and to, um, to, to highlight areas of importance um, that you should consider in your action plan. So the idea is that you have this discussion with your four colleagues at the institution and put the wide forum with them and then move on to formulating your action plan, making use of some of the discussion that, that came up during the Plastic Cafe. Um, we felt that it was, and we were guided again by our American colleagues and had a lot of experience of this, um, we decided that it would be far too much to look at all seven those areas in the capacity cafe. So we selected three that we thought were interesting, where there was something that captured our attention about the results. And so we thought, uh, chose teaching and learning, policy and practice, um, and data and technology to discuss at the, um, the virtual capacity cafe. Um, the format was more is that we had people all joining that meeting, the meeting that we were talking about in the digital meeting. Um, and then we had an introduction, we both facilitated Sue and I. Uh, we had a very good support team so that we could kind of set out what we wanted to achieve in, in the capacity cafe and what the purpose of it was and how it fitted into the whole ICAT process. Um, then we had breakaway rooms uh, facilitated by the various um, screen leaders um, of, of the project. Um, and we discussed three questions in each of the three areas. And those questions are basically what were the great successes, where were the strengths coming out of the results, what, what did people at the institution think were the success stories. Um, and the, those come from the questions as well. What are the big challenges? And then one of the questions attached um, to the various areas is, or do you just not know the answer? It's a sort of don't know category. And that don't know category we thought was very really interesting because in the areas where there was a big don't know category, we wondered what was going on. Why do people at the institution not know about a certain part? about teaching and learning, for instance, or policies and practices. So, um, so in those breakaway rooms, we discussed those three questions, um, and we had scribes um, that we previously had trained. Again, using ATG materials, we trained the scribes on how to capture discussion. Um, and because it was in a, in a virtual, on a virtual platform, they used Jamboard, to record um, some, of the, some of the discussion. Um, but in the different breakaway rooms, we, we actually had quite innovative ideas about how to do it. So um, some of the scribes actually did a mixture of Jamboard, but also keeping track of the discussion, just in sort of prose document. 
So we came away from the Plastic Cafe, I must have said that we then came back um, to the plenary. There was a talk out by uh, one person from each of the groups. And then, um, as facilitators, we explained to the group how we were going to take the material forward, how there was going to be a report, and how the action plan was going to be adjusted um, following these um, discussions. Um, so, and I think it went pretty well, especially um, we were really kind of pioneering this. Um, type of cafe, but I also think that there were limitations. Um, I think the, the platform didn't really allow for the kind of, yeah, just the, the conversation. Yeah, the conversations were difficult. I mean, you know what these online meetings can be like. Um, and especially in an, in an area where trust is really important, I think people found it quite hard to, we had mixed groups, I mean you could choose whether you're going to have your breakaways with management and one and other, you know, like the others, <laughs> you know, or you have your academics in one group and, and we decided to go for mixed groups. But that creates a trust issue because you're sitting in a group with your teacher and learning and you don't know whether you can, you know, highlight that maybe there was some So the trust issue was really difficult to manage. Um, the time issue, I just think it takes so much longer to do all these processes online. So time was an issue. I felt that we really couldn't unpack enough. Um, and then there were some issues around how people viewed the instrument. Um, Facilitators were warned about this, but I mean, I myself as a facilitator found it really hard to stop clever people in my group from saying, oh, this tool, it's, it's not a valid tool. But I know all about um, research and I just know this is not a valid tool. But that is not the point of this tool. It isn't, it isn't a quantitative research tool. Um, the validity lies in something else. That, that you could get impressions from a vast number of people at the institution. But it was very difficult to batch those people. And they talked a lot at a time when <laughs> we already did uh, yeah, have all the statisticians and uh, quantitative researchers. Um, it was really difficult to, to manage them. Um, yeah, and then despite our very hard work at adjusting the iPad for South Africa, they, they were still, there was still terminology that people objected to and couldn't understand. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe before your institution does the iPad, maybe it may be an idea to just look at the instrument and, and to think about how you can manage that. Um, yeah, so I think just in, oh, and then some of the great successes was that like really big areas emerged um, from this whole process. For instance, um, we realized that, for instance, under policies and practices, and BWC is really good for policy creation, but the don't know um, category was huge. It was like 40% of people said that they didn't know about these policies. And we realize that it, it's really a communication issue. So those policies get created, but they're not launched into the institution in a way that anyone knows about them. So that was something that we could really bring back into the action plan. Um, the value of integration really came home to us. Um, yeah, so those, those were great successes that quickly fit into the action plan. And it was a very, it was a very good start at using evidence-based um, practices, evidence-based methodologies uh, to move the institution as a whole to a new understanding of what it is that we want to do when we say we want to promote student success.
Um, so essentially what uh, Northwest USCD was to give you an idea of some of the challenges that can arise when you are, um, you know, uh, administering the ICAT. And the, you know, the response rate to the institution is very low and what you could do to address that problem. Uh, and UWC was very successful. What was the, the response rate? Yeah, it was a, it was a good response rate of 38 um, percent, which means that most of the institutional stakeholders responded to you know to to the questions, and they were able to use the ICAT to identify in each of those capacity areas where their strengths lie, where their weaknesses lie and discuss within the institution where to prioritize in terms of student success. So it's almost like a deep seek into the, you know, in the, into the institution. What do people think of student success? And it's usually very useful when you start. So the new institution this would be a good point, a good entry point to administer the institutional capacity assessment tool in your institution. Um, so I think um, we have time for, you know, for, for questions. I'll take a few questions. Um, yeah, let's see whether, you know, what kind of questions we have and, you know. Yes, there's a question right at the back. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Richard Zawada, and I'm from the Council on Higher Education. Um, I really, really want to encourage all the institutions to use this tool. Because um, some of you may know we're busy introducing the, quali and the new quality assurance framework, the QAF, and one of the methodologies that we encourage them for institutions to use is is exactly evidence-based, reflexive, and generative. So reflecting, and, and that's where you say the impressions from the institution coming through. So, and, and maybe that's an answer for those academics who complain that it's not a valid um, statistical research methodology. It's that it actually complies, if you like, we don't like to use that word, but it will support you, it will be evidence that you can use in the future if the CHE comes from institutional reviews, for example, that you've done this reflection, you've actually looked at how you're doing it and using that to improve very into the future. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Rita. Anyone else? I think we're ready for tea. <laughs>